What's going on everyone? So I landed here in Denver, Denver International Airport. This is actually the largest airport by land area here in North America. And I'm so happy that they got these people mover things, unlike Chicago O'Hare. So Denver is way better at getting around. In fact, this is probably my favorite airport in the United States when it comes to the size it is, the accessibility, the food options, the shopping. This is a very well-designed and trendy airport. That being said, this airport opened up in 1995. It was originally scheduled to open up in 1993, but it opened up in 95, so two years late and a couple billion dollars over schedule, which is kind of unusual, don't you think? In fact, a lot of, it's very loud in here, a lot of people do think that's unusual because there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding the Denver airport abandoned structures underground instead of demolished that were just left abandoned five stories under the ground underneath this airport rumors of bunkers concrete bunkers under the airport in case nuclear war were to happen lots of strange things rumors that the Illuminati the Freemasons the New World Order lizard people you name it there's a lot of crazy conspiracies when it comes to the Denver Airport, but the Denver Airport has fun with this. So I want to show you some of the unusual things that you can see here at the Denver Airport. Again, I love these people movers. Chicago O'Hare, take note. Come on, take note. Well, one of the first things I see is this old airplane hanging up above. And it is busy today. This is way busier than Chicago O'Hare. People are everywhere here at Denver. It's the happening place. So another thing is the, the runways here. The airplane runways are supposedly shaped like a swastika here at the Denver airport. Now they say it's because of the efficiency to get flights in and out, or is there something deeper to that meeting? Here's one of the many good places you can eat here at the Denver Airport, Elway's, named after quarterback John Elway of the Denver Broncos. Looks like it's got a long line, busy today. Lounge 5280, this is a great spot to relax, get a drink. It's located right above this unique sculpture in Concourse B. And you can see there's a lot of great places to eat. Grab coffee, get caffeinated, grab drinks. Again, Chicago O'Hare, you need to take note. Denver Airport, for an airport that's this size, is doing it right. Here outside the train station in Denver Airport is a sculpture of an astronaut. Colorado John Jack Swigert Jr., 1931 to 1982, an astronaut on Apollo 13. Also a congressman, it's a pretty awesome statue. And I think I just missed the train. I got distracted. Here comes the train and I love how they have this countdown here so you know when it's coming. Extremely handy. Now this is by far my favorite sculpture in the entire airport here in Denver. This crazy looking minecart roller coaster ride just love this. And it's right above the train station here in Concourse A. Just reminds me of a wild mine car ride. Kind of like, you know, maybe like Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland. Wildest ride in the wilderness. But yeah, this is Concourse A, the crazy mine cart sculpture. That's the symbol for Concourse A here at Denver Airport. Every concourse here has its own hub where you can shop, you can grab a bite to eat, grab a drink. It's just a very well laid out airport. Well, here we are back in the underground tunnels of Denver Airport. I wonder 
where does that track lead to? Who do you think that leads to over there? Underground bunkers? Alright, so getting off at the main concourse, heading up the escalator to baggage claim. And look at this, the main concourse has like a teepee theme to it. It almost looks like a canvas rooftop here. It could almost resemble the Rocky Mountains, the, you know, the mountain peaks. But yeah, really awesome. It's like a teepee. And you can see the ground here almost glimmers. There's gold in these tiles. Silver and gold. Who knows, but yeah, they, they have a bit of a sparkle. The tiles do. Beautiful airport. So here's one of the unique features of the Denver airport. They have these gargoyles that sometimes come to life. Now I don't know if they're on a sensor or if somebody is watching and controlling these things, but these gargoyles will come to life and talk when you least expect it. This one is in the baggage claim. And uh, there's also a Pepsi machine next to it. But yeah, you will find these gargoyles situated in the baggage claim areas. There's, there's more than just one. This isn't the only one. But yeah, very unusual here in the Denver airport. What does it mean? Well, this gargoyle is a little camera shy. He's not wanting to talk. So I'm gonna go across the baggage claim where there's a few other ones and see if they're a little more animated today. So I'm even more confused now. I went to the other side where there's another baggage claim and I don't see any more of the gargoyles. I thought there was more than one. I asked a couple people that work here and they were completely confused by my question. They had no idea what I was talking about. Apparently they're completely unaware of these gargoyles, which makes me wonder what is going on here at the Denver airport. So they don't even know about the gargoyles. Am I seeing things? Sorry, I mistook you for another gargoyle. Holy cow, the thing just, do not the do thing just talked. Intended. They got like a speaker here. Bags and suspicious behavior to the nearest you, you, hey, I'm talking to you. Can you throw some pants? You talking to me? Unattended items will be confiscated and may be destroyed. Look at that, the gargoyle talks. You are kidding. I had no idea. So the gargoyle actually moves and interacts and talks. There is a conspiracy theory here. Are you waiting for your baggage? You went back to uh, being a gargoyle, apparently. So I've been walking all over the baggage claim area and I don't see these apocalyptic murals that used to be really famous and bizarre here at the Denver airport. I, I think they might be gone. I think they've been doing some renovations and they may have gotten rid of them. I can't see them anywhere. There's supposed to be two of them, one on the east and west baggage claim. But you can see there's nothing here. So I'm starting to think that they got rid of the apocalyptic murals, which was such a funny theme to the Denver airport. I'll show you what they looked like because I've filmed them before in the past, so this is what they look like. This is a very colorful painting they have here. Now this one is kind of happy looking, but this one right here is kind of freaky. If you look at that, they have like a forest emblazed in fire. Uh, a penguin in like a glass case and uh, some dead bodies. You can have like a dead child in the tomb and a kid holding a squirrel and crying. I don't know, you tell me. Is there a conspiracy theory with the Denver airport? I think the apocalyptic murals are no more, which breaks my heart. That's what was fun about this airport. Huh. Well, on to other things. So I finally found this. It took me a while. It's actually located on the south 
terminal, the south end of the TSA check-in, south side of the airport. But look at this, March 19th, 1994, Denver International Airport dedication capstone. It says the, the time capsule beneath this stone contains messages and memorabilia to the people of Colorado in 2094. So there's actually things, I'm guessing, buried in the stone or under the airport that they will open up like a time capsule in 2094. But what I wanted to point out is right here, it says New World Airport Commission contributors, and it names some people here, but there is no such thing as the New World Airport Commission. It doesn't exist. And there's this kind of weird Freemasons sign located there as well. So a lot more mystery here in the Denver airport. They even have a Braille message here as well. I, I don't read Braille, so I don't know what this says. But they've got a Braille message as well at the dedication marker. So just some more unusual things to see here at the Denver airport. Now, is this asking someone earlier um, that worked here directed me to where this was and she mentioned that this is the time portal to a different alien dimension. So, and she works at the Denver airport. So the people here have fun with all the weird things at this airport. Check this out. They've got this map of roadside attractions across the United States. It's called America, why I love her. And this is in the main terminal where you check in here at the Denver airport. But take a look at this, it's just quirky. And there I am right here in Denver, next to the you are here, but your luggage, but your luggage is in Pittsburgh. I, I hope not, I'm carrying on today, so that shouldn't happen. But yeah, they just have all these crazy roadside attractions that are located in all these places across the USA. Some of these I've been to, a lot of these are on my to-do list. Let's see if I can spot a few that I've been to. Okay, so Iowa, I have been to the Grotto of the Redemption. I have been to the Buddy Holly Monument in Clear Lake. You know what, I have never been to the Time Museum in Rockford. In fact, I've never even heard of that. Huh. See, even I'm learning of places, new places here in the United States, places I've never heard of. Interesting. Of course, uh, Wall Drug, I've been to Wall Drug in South Dakota. That is a, a must for anybody that's a fan of quirky roadside attractions. I have seen the largest ketchup bottle in East St. Louis. But yeah, I feel like a lot of these I still have yet to see. House on the Rock, okay, that is one of my favorite roadside attractions in southern Wisconsin. That is another must destination. I saw that years ago. I haven't vlogged that yet, and I'm planning to do, to do that soon. But yeah, just a really cool map they have here at the Denver airport of fascinating, quirky roadside attractions across the United States. Well, thanks for tagging along today on my venture travels from Chicago to Denver, the Mile High City. I've got a lot of videos planning to film this week, uh, which also is going to be a stay at the Stanley Hotel, one of the most haunted hotels in the United States that inspired Stephen King to write The Shining. But until then, this is Eric. Thanks for watching. It's time for me to get out of here. There's my brother right here. Well, it's not quite over yet, because straight ahead is one of the most iconic symbols of the Denver airport, this demon horse known as Blucifer. You can see it pranced up on its two hind legs straight ahead of me. If you ever come into Denver at night, its eyes are glowing red. And Blucifer actually killed its creator. A piece of its head fell on him. 
I believe his name was Luis Jimenez, but a piece of the sculpture fell on him, severing an artery in his leg, and he bled to death. That's right, the sculpture murdered its creator, Lucifer, the demon horse, here in Denver. <sighs> Is it a conspiracy? I don't know. But a lot of strange things to be found at the Denver airport. Well, I'm finally here in Denver. I've landed. Thanks for tagging along on my journey as we bump up and down here on the road from Chicago, Illinois to Denver, Colorado. Thanks for watching. It's time for me to get out of here. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this shot, I'm just going to put music over it anyway, so whatever. I thought so.